up he wasn't recording yet. No. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> well, welcome everyone again um, to the Castlevania Ravenloft game. Uh, last we left our adventurers, they had got uh, pretty beat up by some shadows down in the basement area in the Death House. Retreated up after Brent saved the party, uh, Elias turned undead and made them all flee. Uh, Jack used inspiration to make sure they got disadvantage on all of their saves for that, which was uh, a great call. Although, um, every dice rolled in their saves was bad. I don't think that even if they would have had it, that it would have... I mean, I, it was just a really bad roll. Maybe a couple of them out of the five would have made their saves, but... Yes, they all retreated, and then uh, you guys went to um, spend some, or waste some time, because it's 24 hours until your next long rest. A good portion of that's passed as you went and got uh, Father Donovich. Um, he's followed you to the death house, which on in transit you encountered the pie-selling lady again, who was stuffing a child into a bag, and uh, Elias chased... Elias and Jeeves chased, uh, chased him down, uh, rescued the child, and uh, Father Donovich says that he'll take care of the child while they figure out what's wrong with parents and solve that problem. So, uh, all right. So, fired plus one male child. Alexandra is tapping away on the harpsichord, and up the stairs comes the rest of the party. Uh, Father Donovich. And the child looked a little reluctant to go into the house at first, but um, as they saw that the furnishings were pretty nice and they felt safe in your company, uh, they followed you up the stairs past the uh, the broken armor that rests at the floor there. Um, the remains of a, a broom snapped in half, and, <laughs> and now you guys are in this, this room that looks like it's uh, pretty large, a lot of chairs. Um, and what would you like to do? Uh, Father Donovich says, uh, If you could all gather around, I can tend to your wounds. Thank you, Father. That sounds good. Okay, so he's going to cast... Um, well, he's going to pray, and then in the immediate area around him, everyone feels their vitality uh, push up to the maximum. So everyone is now fully healed. Uh, Mr. Jeeves gets the most benefit out of this. Alexandra and uh, Elias, they both feel a lot better too. Jack got some previous help, but uh, at this point, everyone's everyone's uh, hit points come back. Um, hold on one second, I just realized I loaded up my old sheet instead of my current one. That's fine. Yeah, I did that last time for the first few minutes. I, I removed all the wound points off of everyone. Um, there we go, much better. I was wondering why I only had three wound points and both my hit dice were back, magically. <laughs> <laughs> now that I've restored your vitality, is there anything else I can do? What should I... should I follow you now? Father, if you feel comfortable doing that, you're more than welcome to join us, but I'd hate for anything to happen to you. As well as you have this um, child in your company now, and I would love for you to protect him. I know you're missing your son, Doru, and uh, I feel that this worked out well for you. I think God may have a plan for you with this child. And that plan is not getting yourself murdered in the basement of this abominable, abominable house. Then what is it you would have us do? Well, if you wouldn't mind, um, I don't expect us to be here much longer. If you would uh, be able to wait outside for us, just in case we need your assistance again, uh, that would be most helpful. Um, Alexandra and uh, Jack, the voices in your head of the ghostly children are excited that there's another little one here, and they ask, can we please play with him in our room? I'm not sure that would be wise. But we have you would hate for something to happen to him and him be stuck here like you, wouldn't you? But we've never had a friend before. We have yeah, toys we can know. share. But if all goes well, you'll be able to play with him after we're done here. When we first encountered you both, you were both waiting outside the house. 
his father is going. Father Tonovich is going to be waiting outside. Why don't you play outside with a little boy instead? We can't mm. go outside. That was the house luring us in, as they say. Yeah. What if they were to wait here in the foyer? Can we take the door off its hinges before that? Who are you asking? The group at large. Because if uh, Father Donovan and his new ward would like to stay in here, I'd feel more comfortable if there was little chance that the house could trap them as well. Oh. Okay. Anyone have any disagreements to this plan? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no disagreements, it sounds like. Um, so, can he play with us in our room? Says the voice of the random little boy. The foyer. Maybe if you could get our toys then. Yes, I was going to suggest, what if we bring your toys downstairs instead? That'd be great. Can you get the dollhouse, too? Sure. Alright, you guys recall that the dollhouse and the toy chest were pretty large. Um, so, maybe... Uh, it would be easiest if two people grabbed the toy chest. But, I don't know, however you guys want to do it. I'll go with Alexander since I'm playing folks to uh, Thorn, so... Okay, and while they're going off, I'll explain to Paulson what the situation here is, because I don't think he understands uh, what we're talking about. Um, these uh, these two uh, kids we we're talking to that you don't actually see uh, are actually ghosts that inhabit this house, and uh, they would like to play with you. Uh, I know this sounds really scary and, and nonsensical. We should mention that they're friendly. <laughs> but they are quite friendly ghosts. They uh, We have been willingly possessed by them, actually. Uh, we've grown close to them, so I think you'll be fine. Uh, the kid looks terrified. Yeah, you did not do a good job of selling that at all. Sorry. Well, at, at least he's prepared for it now, as opposed to just ghosts coming out of nowhere. I've never heard of anything like people being willingly possessed or playing with ghost children. This is definitely an interesting day <laughs> wow. for me. Neither have I, Father, but we are with an interesting group here. Uh, but yeah, the kids are, are quite enjoyable. Uh, and should anything happen, of course, you are free to leave. <laughs> Jack, is that persuasion? Don't quit your day What's job, Elias. <laughs> That's to persuade the child to be less afraid. Okay, well, uh, just with rolls alone, um, if you don't want to roleplay that, that's a pretty powerful role. So I'm going to go ahead and say that the kid looks a little more open to the idea of playing with dead children. <laughs> wow. At least he knows what's happening now, or what's coming to him. At least not quit your day job. Okay, where did you want us to wait? Foyer would probably be a good idea. Uh, is that the place with the stairs or downstairs? The opening hallway of the house. In oh, case okay. anything happens, downstairs. though, they can escape, yeah. And that's good, just in case I need to turn undead again, I won't scare the children. Exactly. Okay, well, Father Donovan, uh, Donovich, now you got me doing it, uh, <laughs> um, is overseeing three children, one of which is alive. <laughs> and um, you, you march down their, their toys from uh, the attic. Of course, you have to take the secret stairs that you found to get there. But um, you manage to get the dollhouse and the chest of toys down, and the children look like they're having a great time. 
Maybe this will help kind of uh, ease the children into the idea of leaving the house. Um, roll a religion check. Okay. That would probably be the best for me. All of us? Nah. Oh, maybe. <laughs> wow. Huh. Same. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, what would you guys like to do next? Well, since we're healed up and ready, did you want to go explore the basement and try to narrow our way down the hallway so the shadows can't overwhelm us? Well, now's as good time as any, unless we wait even longer for, um, for us to rest again. So. We could bottleneck them in the basement, just as we did with the ghouls. However, I probably would need to have my weapon blessed if it's going to have any effect on them. Right, and we would be bottlenecked as well if we use that other passage, because it's a single file um, down there as well. So. What do the rest of you say? Well... I think we gotta take them out, so the best gets. I'm sure we can find somewhere to, to work to our advantage. Alright. Um, yeah, that chief seems to be a pretty good shot with his bow and arrow. He's so far managed not to hit any of us while still hitting his target. Okay, well, let's go. Alright, what room did you want to go in? Uh, did you just okay. start the stairs? Bring up the map, yeah, yeah let's start us, the, start us at the stairs and let's bring up the map and then we can decide from there. Alright, I'll move everyone over and then share that area. There we go. I think they're talking about the uh, the new shortcut area. Oh. Oh, yeah. Is that, is that right, guys? Honestly, this would probably be the best place to lure them, because we could have one of each of us on each of these sides, and then we could still have our sneak attacks available in handy while bottlenecking them. We don't know where they are, though. I'm sure if we grab the bag there, turn up. Is there a certain direction you guys want to head, or...? Well, I think it would be best for one of us to lure them out, instead of all of us at once heading down and getting a beat up. Right. Um, okay, so I know they're down this direction, the, um, you know, the southwest. Yes, uh... That's where they originally ran from, was in that direction. Okay, so assuming they returned to where they were, then they would be down there where the dagger was. Um, we still could explore that hallway, too, and see if there's anything to our advantage down there. Right, that may be a better idea to get a better lay of the land, just in case our diversion uh, plan doesn't quite work out. True that. Okay. Let's uh, all the head down the other way then. Well, where I am right now is exactly 60 places, so that's just movement action. Alright, so far no, uh, no encounters. Okay, so let's move down in this area. Sure. Uh, is everyone with him? I don't know. <laughs> I am. Logan, you with us? Um, kind of. Hang on. <laughs> Bad time fun. Bad time fun. Bad time fun. Ah. Uh. Yeah, 
I was just saying goodnight to my own. How's my microphone coming in? Sound good? Alright. I'm yeah, good. Alright, Jack. You gonna... I can move your token. Um... There we go. There we go. Good deal. Sorry, that was distracting me for a minute. All right. This room contains a large wood framed bed with a rotted feather mattress, a pair of iron candlesticks, and an open crate. At the foot of the bed is a wooden footlocker. Alexander, you are uh, free to destroy the candlesticks if you feel so inclined. Matter of fact, I do. <laughs> I don't know how you Belmonts are. <laughs> All right, uh, a couple of candlesticks dead. Feel better? My resolve has mustered, indeed. Search for traps poorly. Um, yeah, I'll do the poorly. I'll search as well. Go ahead. Uh, Search for traps by carousing around like a drunk kangaroo. I'll do perception on the room. Uh, <laughs> very badly. It's pretty dark in here, huh? Let's okay. Uh, are you searching any particular location? Any any particular features of the room? That wardrobe looks mighty suspicious. All right, we'll handle that first. Then uh, the wardrobe appears to contain several old robes. Cool. Old robes. These look like the black robes you found in the very first closet, one of which you took, but these are not uh, nice and shiny and new. These are old, tattered, and uh, dusty. What is this thing there in the corner? Uh, that is a crate. It is open. And um, it looks like it contains a bunch of torches, a leather sack, and uh, the sack looks like it has some stuff in there. I'm going to pick up a second and check inside. Uh, carefully. It's, it's about 15 candles uh, inside. We know how you feel about candles. That belongs to me now. <laughs> All the candles must be broken, right? Is there something at the foot of the bed? Yes, there's a foot locker there. Is it open? Um, it appears to be locked. Uh -huh. Alright. Time to break out the picks. Candle Margulis. All candles must die. <laughs> Did you just speak Latin? <laughs> okay, wow, yeah. It opens right up. Um, let's see here. No poison darts this time? No poison darts. Okay, thank you. They're actually poison <laughs> asps. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, great, fantastic. <laughs> As if Steve's hasn't already dealt with enough during this adventure. Uh, you find a very nice folded cloak. It looks uh, it looks of excellent craftsmanship. You you actually uh, think that it might have some kind of special purpose or power. Um, also in the Footlocker is a small wooden coffer, and uh, it is it appears to be unlocked. If you'd like to open it. Uh, check for traps first. Yeah, I'll check for traps and then open it. Uh, it looks pretty tame, and then you open it to find four potions. Um, mm. Jack, roll for Arcana. Mm. Uh, with that Arcana roll, you can still see that they they look pretty familiar. These are actually kind of common for where you're from. Um, those are potions of healing. Ooh, handy. Uh, also, uh, there's a chain shirt here. Um, huh. There's a mess kit. And uh, there's a flask that contains something 
uh, liquid inside. Jack, make another uh, Arcana roll for that. I'm the least proficient in it, and I got the best <laughs> roll. <laughs> yes, uh, between the both of you, you can see that this is um, Alchemist Fire. <laughs> Uh, there's even more actually there's a bullseye lantern a set of thieves tools and a spell book with a yellow cover huh mm -hmm. All right. well, I'm going to give the uh, spell book to Jack alright it's a wizard spell book uh, sorcerers really don't have all that much need for it but yes I'm sure it would interest him the most let's see if I can't <laughs> use this uh, fantasy grounds loot giver here like I did that one time and can anyone wear this chain shirt that would put you good use to it? I could. Uh, the chain shirt is medium armor. It has an AC base of 13, and uh, the dexterity bonus allows up to two uh, dexterity modifier. So. so Alexandra has a better dexterity modifier from her leather armor currently, right? Um, what's your dexterity modifier bonus, Alexandra? Um, plus four. Yeah, that would uh, that would take th that would prevent you from using two of those uh, towards your AC. Bummer. Well, <laughs> let's see. What's your AC? Fifteen. It would um, be the same then, wouldn't it? Well, it depends on what her leather does for her AC, but uh, I doubt that I doubt that she would benefit from it greatly. What about our two um, uh, Jeeves or Jack? I have better AC without it. Yeah, and Jeeves, can you even wear medium armor? The um, the leather armor AC base is eleven. Yeah, so this is thirteen, but because it's taken two out of It'll your, uh, yeah, it'd be the same. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, okay. Wait, it's probably worth something at least. Sure. Sell it to uh, the bazaar. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this, uh, this uh, reminds... We should probably do an arcana check on the cloak. I can uh, think to myself if there are any stories about magical cloaks. Because that's really kind of all arcana can do as far as identifying magic is uh, stories, thing like that. It's not a one-trick pony. It's symbols of the occult. Right. It, it's not like an identify skill, really, right? Not quite. It can kind of, like, if it happens to have runes that were, you know, meant to be, in, that mean invisible or things like that. Yeah. Um, the way I handle it with Jack is basically, I've had, have I heard stories that this would fit in? Which, or, item, which item are you talking about? <laughs> the cloak. Cloak. Oh, um. Yeah, my fancy cloak. I think that you would have to attune to it, uh. So you'd have to put it on and spend some time with it before you really understand its powers. Sounds like a commitment. I'll throw it on. As soon as I'm you do, something happens. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> we can divvy right. up this treasure later, then. Um... Well, you, you guys are already this. rolling initiative. You hear a beautiful <laughs> song that seems to be coming from all around you. The ghostly image of a dancing ballroom couple fades into existing existence, hovering in the air. They bear a striking resemblance to the Durst portraits you saw in the house earlier. Their dance of illusion seems to mesmerize you as you see the couple produce a rapier in each hand. Oh, oh god. So Roll initiative. Oh god, it's them. Dance of Illusions, huh? Uh, that's the uh, the Dracula song, Illusionary Dance. God. Wow. <laughs> I just seem to attract. We just <laughs> can't win. But I do have no, a fancy that cloak. This isn't Dance of Illusions. This is Dance of Pales. Yeah, yeah, it's close enough. It didn't sound no, as no, cool. Like, I wrote it I, like I was, that. <laughs> I, I was reading that from the description of what he just said. There, he said they were doing an illusion dance. Wow. But yeah, this is definitely uh, Dance of Pales, yeah. Yep. Better. Indeed. This is more waltzy. 
Good stuff. Yes. When we get back to the inventory thing, um, we got crossbows before as well as bolts. I'm not sure if any of us actually got the bolts. And uh, I was thinking about using my crossbow pretty soon because I, I think I'm the only one that doesn't have a bow already. Mm -hmm. All right. So did we all? We all rolled an initiative, correct? Yes, we did. Yep. Yeah. First up will actually be Gustav Durst. Well, um, I suppose this answers this question. The parents are definitely no longer among the living. Correct. Okay, Elias, since you're the closest. Um, actually, this. Am might... I standing on the? Am I on the bed? Yep. Yes, you are on the bed. They are hovering above the ground so far that the bed wouldn't hinder them at all. But uh, there's this rotten mattress that's made of like straw and stuff just under your feet. It's uh. Okay. Might be susceptible to flame. Yes, because setting it on fire while Elias is on top of it is a fantastic uh, idea. We'll, we'll, we'll move him first. Elias loves fire. Yeah. Okay, well, uh, right before your eyes, Elias, they do a stunning performance, and uh, I'm up. they miss. <laughs> <laughs> Great performance. I'm not a good dancer. Uh, Mr. Chiefs. Bravo, you failed. All right. Time to attack with the rapier. All right. That's a hit. Excellent. Um, even though she seems to have a ghostly form, that seems to uh, really hurt. So uh, your rapier slashes straight through their incorporeal body, um, and there's no emotion on her face. So even though it looked like it hurt, uh, it didn't look like her face changed at all. Um, it's covered by what looks to be some kind of ballroom porcelain mask uh, upon closer inspection. Um, next up will be Jack. Green flame. Does it count as he's being within five feet of her? Yes. Green flame blade. All right. That's a hit. I would hope a 20 would be a hit. Sneak attack? Yes, it is. They are slightly distracted by Elias' presence. And Jeeves. Alright. Yes, heavy damage. Uh, that looks like it was really effective. And I will apply two damage, correct, to the other one? Yes. Alright. And with that, it'll be Elias' turn now. Alright, I will turn my attention to Elizabeth Nurse as well. And I will swing my longsword at her. Yeah, pick on her. Okay, I see. One. Oh, that's a miss. Draft. Alexander, uh, you're next. Uh, unless Elias had anything else. Let's see, I'm going to stay where I'm at, so pass to her. I will use my whip to finish her off. Alright. Um, give yourself a negative two to hit since Elias is kind of in the way. Oh, great. Nice. Alright. Yeah, 21 to hit, even with uh, two out of that. So... Oh, you did take two out of it. I did. I used the disadvantage too. All right. Uh, everyone hears the crack of a whip and pow. Um, Elizabeth Durst looks like she is out of commission. So uh, now there's one dancer remaining. And he is going to 
move over and attack Alexandra. He's going to attempt to stun her with his amazing dance. <laughs> and Do I have to make a check. Uh, yes, but first, um, part of his dance includes his rapier flying at your face. Oh, fantastic! Uh, <laughs> which does ten damage. Ooh. And Ow. now I'll need you to do a uh, a will save. Uh, which one is the other one? Uh, just your willpower. It's uh, it says wisdom. Was Wis- uh, wisdom? Yeah, the plus three one you got. Oh, All right. Damn. Uh, you've seen dazed and just mesmerized by the dance. Mr. Jeeves, you see that uh, Alexandra has kind of got this dazed look in her eye and uh, it's your turn to react. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to take a shot at Mr. Gustav. Attacking while out of ammo. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> you have to load the crossbow first, Jeeves. Yeah, that's not good for your weapon. Yeah. Firing it, dry firing it like that. But, uh, <laughs> I will assume said. that you, uh, you collected half of your arrows from the last fight and, uh, <laughs> and send right. one of those at her. I mean, at him. And it is a hit, so go ahead and roll damage. Jeez. All right. Man, you guys are dangerous tonight. Jack, you're up next. You see an arrow from uh, from Jeeves fly and impale this ghastly dancer. Well, we're kind of whipped last time we played, so it's time for a comeback. And it looks like you're making it. Logan, you there? Oh, there he is. He, he was just waiting for me to say that, I think. <laughs> yes, that's definitely a hit. And it will be sneak attack. The sneak attack stuff nice. is deadly, man. Heavy damage. I know, man. It's really dropping my, uh, my monsters. Back in the day, we couldn't get ranged sneak attacks, but... Apparently, can't on this one. All right, uh, Elias, it's your turn. Yeah. To be fair, um, those guys don't have the best uh, defense. Like, and Jack's HP is really. Good. But uh, all right, let's see. Let's take your flame this guy. All right, it failed its save. All right, let's see what kind of radiant damage it takes. Five. Uh, it looked like it definitely hurt it. Don't know if it did anything special because it's radiant, though. Alexandra, you are stunned. Please make a another wisdom save. Much better. You snap out of it. Uh, unfortunately, that was uh, the end of your turn, though. And he's going to attempt to do the same thing again. My face hurts. But I think he's going to pick on Elias, too. Everyone took shots at his wife, so it's fair game. Yeah, but I finished her off. Oh, boy. I missed, I missed her. <laughs> uh, that AC of yours, why do I even try? <laughs> <laughs> Chainmail. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, he misses. You, uh, you dodge and out of his rapier's, uh, dance. So next up will be Mr. Jeeves again. All right. This time I have arrows. Okay. Finish it off, Jeeves. It's a hit. God bless. Okay. Um, <laughs> you hear the music start to fade as, uh, the dancer slowly fades into nothingness. Excellent job, y'all. Rest well, Gustav. Alright, so back to this loot, huh? I'm kind of glad the kids were elsewhere. Yeah, that's true. As do I. We should probably say a prayer just to let their souls pass on peacefully. I'm completely sure that they have gone, but I will say a prayer nonetheless. Father, I pray that these souls find rest all at all possible, Lord, and I pray the same for this house, Father. I pray for these children, that their souls may find peace. They may be prone to wonder to stay in this house for um, an unknown period of time. Lord, I pray that you watch over their souls and deliver them as you would. I pray the same for uh, Father Donovich and the care that he's taken of this child that he has I pray these things in your son's name. Amen. Amen. All right. On another note, gentlemen, this room and this hallway seem to be the perfect place to lure the shadows. Uh, well, let's not Maybe forget I... the loot first. So the cloak of protection is going to Mr. Jeeves. Uh, who wants the lantern, if anyone? Bullseye Wait, lantern. Doesn't... Alexandra doesn't have any light, does she? I have a hooded lantern in the suit. Oh, okay. Anyone else? Does the bullseye lantern offer better light, though? A uh, 60-foot cone of dim light. Twice as far. Hmm. I already have a lamp. Let it go to somebody else. Okay. Alas, Jack. Uh, I have the light cantrip, so I don't really need it. All right. I guess Jack gets it then. Um, mess kit. How about I just hit the button and you guys distribute as you see fit? <laughs> or who wants the potions of healing? There's four of them. Let's split them. I could use one right now, honestly. <laughs> uh, I'll go uh, think it would be wisest to split them one to a person. All right. Yeah. Maybe Makes if sense. I leave the assignment blank, it'll go ahead and do that. Um, and the chain shirt. Who wanted that? Uh, I guess I'll carry it until we can sell it. Right. And does anyone currently have those bolts we got? Alchemist fire. I'll take it. Okay, I'm gonna hit the button. Let's see what it does. I got the mess kit going to someone random. Uh, and I've just got Jack's first name in there, so I don't know if that's gonna work, but boom. There we go. How'd it go? Oh no. It, it did sold them. Stupid thing. Now, okay. now last time it said that it didn't actually sell anything. I know, I know. All right, so let me let me do this again. Um, Let's see, you had two gold left over from last time. Let me get rid of all this stuff. Sorry guys, I'm I'm new to distributing loot in this program. It's okay. Oh hey. Why did it Why did it do that? Whatever. <laughs> Mr. Jeeves is getting the flask and the chain shirt, it looks like. Uh yeah. That's uh did they it over. From Oh, were you looking in the party sheet or something? Right, yeah. Oh, well, I didn't know you guys could just do that. I didn't know you could see it. <laughs> yeah, just drag okay, it to my inventory. Yeah. Um, okay, so let me get the rest of the items back. I was busy deleting them while you were dragging them over. Uh, and that link's right under Elias, so I'm going to move him out of the way. Come back. All right, this parcel... Okay, so everyone open up their party sheet. And let's see, the chain shirt's already been given. And that one's fire. Uh, do you know where the party sheet is, guys? It's in the um, yep. upper right. Yeah. And then the inventory tab. Okay. I see. All right.
Cool. I took one, I took one potion. Wow, that is a lot easier than me trying to have to, like, type in people's names to distribute everything and ask you guys. I just, like, throw it in there and you can loot it as you see fit. Yep. Nice. Alright. Cool. Okay. So, now that you have a bunch of good loot, um... Mark, you throw uh, that I'm gonna cloak. use this potion. Alright. Wait, hold on, how much HP does it heal for? 2d4 uh, plus 2. Yeah. Did you want to roll that, or shall I? I'll do it. So, 5. That was half your damage. Yay. I'll apply it. Alright. You feel almost as good as new. Um, Mr. G, Dance as you, is still playing, just, you know. As you put the cloak on, you can feel that it does have some kind of magic to it, but you'd have to spend some time, uh, maybe about an hour just uh, focusing on nothing but it. Okay. Did you guys want to take some time to do that now, or what? Yeah, I was going to say, how much longer do we have before we can take our long rest? Um, the time is currently about 11 in the morning. So, it wasn't... In it you guys, the last long rest that you did ended at 12 midnight. So, does that mean you guys have to wait until 4 p.m.? Because that would be when you started the rest from last time. Hmm. That would be a full 24 hours. Yeah, so you got about five hours. Um to go before a full rest. But honestly, your hit points and stuff are really good right now. Yeah, we're doing okay. Yeah, we could we blow an hour with him trying to get in touch with his cloak. Okay, so you're going to wait until noon? Sure. Right. Right. Um, you discover the powers of this cloak. It's Cloak of Protection, as you saw when you drug in your inventory. Waka waka. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it'll give you a plus one bonus to AC and saving throws. Wow. Cool. So you can go ahead and equip that, Ben. And please tell me that it automatically changes your, your AC there. Mm. Nope. You kidding me? Am I you equipped to, it? I'm going to have to no. throw a... It's still 13. All right, I'll hold on then. Let's see. Yeah, because if I unequip it off of you, it doesn't do anything. All right, well, that's fine. Um, we'll just take a second here to do some uh, Fantasy Ground School. Um, in your actions, there is a spot we can make for uh, start powers. Or, let's see, what's the syntax for that? They're called... Um, What are they called? Oh, yeah. We didn't really get to have those on Elias anymore. But I think maybe you've got one. Yes, start effect is what they're called. And if I expand it out... Hmm. I can add an action to it, and it will be an effect, and that effect, oops, did I just give extra damage to, 
Well, it's the venture. I think so. Yep, I did. Whoops. I was just trying to look at this. I still thing. have this other effect done, too. I don't know why. Um, well, you have your dueling fighting style. So that always gives you that uh, extra two damage. Oh, okay. I was just trying to kind of copy the syntax of it. So I think the way that I put it in there is AC colon one and target is self and expend is never. Uh, I'm not sure how to do your saving throws. We'll just have to remember that for now. We'll, we'll figure it out after the, uh, the rest of the night. But now when I put Jeeves in the combat tracker, let me take you out first. And now when I put you back in, yes, you have effects AC1. So, cool. Yeah, it'll add a extra AC to you. Even though it doesn't show on your character sheet, it'll show in the combat tracker that you have an extra AC on there. And I think I'll if take... we... Oh, no, it doesn't appear to be working. Huh. Huh. It says effects AC1 in the combat tracker for me. Yeah, but his AC looks like it just says 13. I don't know. I, th I think it might be working. We'll, we'll check it out. Um, I'll just have to note and pay extra close attention to, to Jeeves tonight and how he's affected by the rules. Um, Alright, with that, what what do you guys want to explore, and what Castlevania soundtrack do you want to listen to? I'm going to get back to some Harmony of Despair or something. So darkness would be fine. Yeah, do COD, that'd be fine. And uh, Mike, do you, you mind if I drag uh, 20 bolts to my inventory? Because I know we have some, but I don't know how many we're supposed to have. Sure, that's fine. Alright, so what next? Well, we've got, what, three more hours to kill? If you want to take a long rest, but, um... You're the, you're the only one that's hurt, and you only have five wound points on you. Well, does anybody want to go try and grab that dagger and lure the shadows back to us? Um, uh, we don't exactly have to, but we can if, uh, if you'd like to try. Um... We can just go ahead and try to resolve the um, the main uh, issue with this house. I'll do it. <laughs> Jack said I'll do it. He'll resolve the main issue? <laughs> well, if you prefer, we could just go and head to that stairwell. I'm not sure what state the, uh, the shadows are actually in. If that was a trap, a one like a trap that was just going to spring on us when we go over there, or if they're actually wandering around and might, they might attack us later. I'm not sure. <laughs> Looks like Jack is rolling initiative. Sorry, I didn't see it. Apparently, my screen was locked. Um. Well. I'm fine with whatever we do, gentlemen. When you when you defeated the ghosts, it looks like they uh, they left parts of their their clothing, but uh, just tatters that um, were mostly slain off of them after you guys just uh, tore them apart. So uh, that seems to be the only remains of Elizabeth and Gustav Durst. Is some of their personal items. I'm going to gather up their clothing and bring it to their crypts. Okay. Um, if you place the clothing in the crypts, uh, you feel just uh, the sense of darkness in the house lightens just the in the most uh, barely perceivable way. Huzzah.
The children's crypts are still there to your left. Doors open and coffins are also open. Well, I think we already searched them, didn't we? So. Mm hmm. Yeah, they were empty. Um, Mike, can Elias peek over around this corner here to see if the shadows are in the room over there? Uh, roll a stealth check. What's that? Uh, roll stealth. Oh, I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> Somebody else could try that. <laughs> I can do that. I could do that. Ooh. Okay. Jeeves can do it quite well, though. Uh, Mr. Jeeves, you creep up to about here, and from there, well, about here at the corner. It'd help if I reshared the sheet, huh? Um, you don't see any shadows. Uh, roll a perception check. Um, you're pretty certain that they are at least not um, visible. Cool. Alright, who wants to go in first? <laughs> so I'm assuming that the shadows may materialize when we pick up the dagger. Um, if it's necessary for us to do that to fight them, and if you all, all actually do want to fight them, um, perhaps one of us could draw their, their attention and then kind of filter them out. That was my thought. Yeah, uh, exactly. That was um, that's what we were trying to do. Um, um, I'll want to do that. Uh, I think that's a good, a good way to do it, but I don't know if we actually have to fight them. I think it would be best to wait until we all had sufficient weapons that could deal damage against them because my physical weapons were not doing a whole hell of a lot. And they hit quite hard. Yes, and uh, what happened last time is they all have actually appeared right next to each of us. So it may not actually help uh, de like our positioning, like depending on how we try to lure them out. Exactly. I vote we deal with whatever was down those stairs initially first, and then we can come back to the shadows at a later time. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Um, everyone in agreement? Yep. Alright. Uh, Jack, roll perception check. Yeah, it's... You can't tell much details, but it looks like the painting has changed. From where you're at, you can't really see much of uh, how it's different, but you can tell it's changed. Uh, the scenery looks different now. Interesting. Uh, it, it, it should be safe to take a closer look as long as we don't touch the dagger, I assume. If you want to risk it. Take a look. Sure. Um, where last time you saw that there were all these... Uh, these people looking like they were groveling at this man who had his uh, his left hand on a wolf. Um, in this, uh, in the changes now, you see that all of those people are being disemboweled, and uh, the the wolf is ripping them apart. And um, the man's expression hasn't changed. It looks like he doesn't care about the carnage going on around him. In fact, you can see blood uh, uh, on his mouth and on his hands, his clawed hands. Mm. Strahd. It does look similar to uh, the man you saw outside of Ismark's mansion. Interesting. You don't suppose this house once belonged to him? You can see that one of the black-robed figures is, like, on its knees, and it's holding a hand out like um, like it's pleading for its life to the man. Is it a man or a woman? Um, the cloaked figure is a woman. Hmm. 
Well, that's foreboding. I'm going to take my black cloak off now. <laughs> Very well. Second second no, no, no. I'm putting it back on. It's just a painting. <laughs> I was going to just try and burn it. Um, my cloak or the painting? The painting. You're going to burn the painting? I said consider. Oh. I still think we should deal with whatever it was in the far basement before we even continue anything in this room. Yes, the the figures in this painting may re- correspond to the uh, the souls of the shadows we saw. It may be one and the same people. Uh, we may need to help them uh, rest, if at all possible. But uh, first, I think we should take care of the task at hand, yes. Um, when the music stopped from the dancers, you heard that the chanting resumed. The chanting, uh, it sounds like, give us your gift, give us your life. Okay, if it looks bad down there, um, I suggest we head back up and wait until we can rest to fight whatever it is. Agreed. All right. Okay. Chiefs, where are you coming? <laughs> He's going back up. <laughs> Chiefs, get back here. Be brave. Yeah, we're going to help her down. Uh, you're going down deeper, and the uh, the chanting here, it sounds like this is the source of the chanting. And they're pushing you together. No, it's me. I'm dragging you guys around. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> like he's vanishing again. <laughs> Um, I'll just go ahead and reveal a good portion of this area. Uh, mm. uh, the ghostly chant emanating here just fills the room. Uh, you can hear a dozen or so voices over and over just chanting. Uh, it looks like there's a couple of... Well, let me get my handy-dandy... Um, Marker. Yeah, this can tell which direction is which. Alright, Steve. <laughs> what was that, Logan? Said, alright, Steve. Who's Steve? Where's Blue? <laughs> Are you searching for clues? Blue's clues. <laughs> I'll search for shiny stuff. I'm looking for a skidoo here. Um, That's you see, all. When you, the you see many skidoos. Off of that. Uh, it looks like there's a lot of niches along these walls, and it looks like each one contains some kind of skidoo. Can I search for traps? Sure. How do you want to go about searching? Uh, visually, I guess for now. Okay. Roll perception. <laughs> uh, you see no traps. Looks like to the Uh, you can see a lot of knickknacks. That's basically all you can see. No traps that uh, appear to be visible. Uh, the anything? Sorry, could you repeat that? My Discord's acting up. Oh, my perception rolls. I was asking if I caught anything that they didn't. No. Well, I am going to use Divine Sense to try to pick up any... Um, any undead or any like ghostly presence in the media area. And what's the range on that? See, I believe it is 60 feet. I think that counts uh, as far enough. You can feel to the west there's a heavy presence of something unnatural. Uh, a singular? No. Okay. 
Uh, you could you could assume that the the voices may be some kind of undead. All right, I'll inform the party. Um, my divine sense uh, from my training as a paladin informs me that some strong presence is to the west. Shall we try to lure it up? Examine the niches. All right, uh, there's quite a lot of them. Um, the one you're standing at now has a small mummified yellow hand with sharp claws. It's on a, ro- uh, a loop of rope. Please don't touch <laughs> Not in my immediate plans. Shall we check it? Look at this one. All right. Let's just see here. That one has a knife carved from human bone. Basically, take a walk around the edge, look at it, and then uh, I guess a knowledge arcana roll to see if I can think of what the hell they're trying to do with these. <laughs> okay, uh, go ahead and go into the inventory section of the party sheet, and I'll just throw all of the items in there so you can take a gander. Um, <laughs> or I'll just I'll go ahead and read them off. Um, there also appears to be a dagger with a rat's skull set into the pommel. Um, an 8-inch diameter varnished orb that looks like it was made from some giant monster's eye. Bat shit. Uh, <laughs> <there's> an <laughs> the great astro- white bat has great white guano! <laughs> frog stick. I want to kill something with a frog um, stick. Well, Jack would know that the guano is a good uh, component in some spells, but um, there's an aspergillium there's an- carved from bone, and what that is is it's like... It's like a round ball that can hold uh, some kind of water, like holy water. And, well, that's what it's used for. It's used for, like, sprinkling holy water. But uh, it doesn't look like you could effectively carry around a bunch of holy water in it all the time. It's it's just used, like, at the moment to to bless people. Um, There's a folded cloak. Looks like it's made from some kind of stitched skin. Uh, Not human, though. Um, There's a desiccated frog lashed to a stick uh, there's a bag full of guano uh, there's a severed finger that looks kind of monstrous there's a six inch tall wooden figure of a mummy its arms crossed over its chest uh, an iron pendant adorned with a devil's face and a shrunken little head uh, <laughs> and finally a small wooden coffer in it like the rat is dagger. a dire wolf's withered tongue. Mm. Nice. So you, you look guys, like spell You can loot that as you wish. I want the rat dagger. I'm not sure I want any of this. <laughs> I'll take the ghastly club. Hmm. Dagger have an ammo key under it. Because you can throw it, bro. Oh. Alright, you guys gobble up all that stuff. Alright, so, uh. From here you can see that the. Um. There's like a 20 degree slope down into some murky water, and at the uh, kind of at the end there is a portcullis, some iron bars that protrude up from the ceiling down. If you were to get closer, you can see through the bars, and then um, you saw that that hallway appears to uh, go west and then turn north. Can I be stealthy and approach? Sure. Sure. 
Oh no. Except you slip and fall on the slope and plop into the water face first. This is a lot of uh, back water. Well, he doesn't slip. He's got some great shoes. You said he should I see something past the bars, right? Yeah. That's why I um, spider shoes. You can tell you're not being very sneaky, but did you want to enter the water? Uh, no. I'm gonna stand outside the water just now. All right. Um, from where you're at, you can see that the uh, the water continues on. Um, what is your vision with... I don't know what you're... You're sneaking, so I don't know what kind of light source you want to shine in here. Mm. Yeah, probably not much. Yeah, this other hallway might be around there, so... We've got the bullseye lantern from earlier. Yeah. You want to use that? It's got a nice flashlight like bead, possibly. Yeah, I still have my hooded lantern as well. I don't know, should be enough. I don't know, what do you think? Should I jump in the water and look around? You are quite well acquainted with water, so. <laughs> All right, I'm well, gonna, I'm pull out my right. uh, hooded lantern and look around. You do have those uh, bars for technique. Hmm. That looks like the main area there. All right. Um, the chanting heard throughout the dungeon originates here. Uh, when you arrive, however, and look through the bars. It falls silent, and the, the <laughs> chanting mysteriously stops. Uh, oh, here. The smooth masonry walls provide excellent acoustics. Feature uh, featureless stone pillars support the ceiling, and a breach in the west wall leads to a dark cave overgrown with vegetation. Murky water covers most of the floor. Stairs lead up to a dry stone to dry stone ledges that hug the wall. Uh, in the middle of the room. Uh, more stairs rise to form an octog octagonal dais yep. that also rises above the water. Rusty chains with shackles dangle from the ceiling directly above the stone altar mounted on the dais. The altar is carved with a hideous depiction of grasping ghouls and is stained with dry blood. Lovely. And over to your left, just beyond the bars, you can see a wheel that could be used, uh, presumably, to open the portcullis that you currently stand at. I guess I can't reach it from here. No, not effectively. Can I lift the portcullis? Is it heavy? Uh, go ahead and try. Give me a strength check. Um, it does give, but you can't get it up. Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 I don't know if we should even try that for now. It may, uh, I'm not sure about that. Where did our music go? I say we check this hallway out here. Indeed. Okay. Let's try to get us some music going. Uh, it looks like it, it goes for about 10 feet before it turns again to the west. Slowly and carefully continue. All right. Uh, it looks like it opens up into a larger room. Mm. Um, we're just going to oh. go ahead and just reveal the whole thing. Uh, it looks like uh, a lot of shackles line the walls of this room's alcoves. Uh, bones litter the floor here. Rusty shackles remain. Hmm. I'm going to walk through slowly and do a perception check. Go ahead. Same for Elias. Yep. Or we could both fail utterly. 
I'll have a look too. Huh. Jeeves saves the day. Uh, Jeeves, you <laughs> actually discovered a secret door. Sweet. Mm. Um, it looks like you could pull open the area. Well, I'll just uh, place this marker here. Oh, boy. There. That's the secret ah. door. Okay, um, I was going to say, is that not a swarm? Let's see. Um, you also notice that hanging on the back wall um, to the alcove there to that's behind you, well, to, uh, to the north and then to the west, uh, there is a, ske- a human skeleton clad in a tattered black robe. Hmm. Alright, can I search it? Sure. Uh, yes, you found a gold ring on one of its fingers. Shiny! I'll go ahead and add that to the party sheet and you can, you can nab it from there. Worth 25 gold. Okay, my friends, I'm quite sure that this uh, secret door we've just found leads back into the ritual room we were just peering into. I am not quite ready to um, to enter there yet, so let's investigate to the north a little bit more. I mean, to the, um, the west. Agreed. It may be a good escape route for us, that secret door. To the west. Anything else in here? Oh, there's no door down here. No. Hmm. Uh, further checks from you, Alexandra, do not uh, reveal anything of note. Just more bones and shackles. Hmm. So just a prison. Well, I guess we have to use that door then. Can I check it for traps? Uh, no, it pulls open, no traps. It opens uh, into the landing that looks like um, overlooks the Deus. Can I uh, stealthily uh, move inside? Alright, you stealthily move in. Where'd you want to move? Okay. It's eerily I'm quiet. I'm going to it, stealthily try to follow him. Okay. Yep. But the acoustics in this room, you can hear every slight little movement you make uh, echoes. (laughs) Both of you, of course. Elias, wearing his heavier armor, stays back and waits in the room next to them. I guess our music just wanted to give up on us. Apparently. Okay, well... I will slowly approach this altar, I guess. Are you going up the, uh... Yes. Alright. Alright, uh, you slosh through the water. Um, it was... (laughs) Two foot deep. Uh, the ceiling is really high here. It's like 16 feet. So uh, those those steps go up a good bit. Uh, about three foot higher than the water surface. And um, yeah, 16 feet high ceilings. Uh, at the highest point, 11 feet above the dais and the, legend, and the ledges there. Uh, the chains dangling from the ceiling are about eight feet long. 
Looks like people used to be shackled here. Prisoners or sacrifices uh, would be dangled apparently above this altar where you see the stained blood. Um, Can I do a perception check on the altar? Uh, nope, because when you get up there, <laughs> the chanting rises once more as 13 dark apparitions appear on the ledges overlooking the room. Each one resembles a black-robed figure holding a torch, but where the torch's fire is uh, supposed to be bright, this is black, and it seems to draw in the light. Um, where you expect to see the faces are just voids, and they all chant, One must die, over and over. One must die. One must die. Ring rays, huh? Is, is Jack all the way up there? Is he with us or down here? Uh, I think Logan might be away. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, he's got some Z's on his character. That sucks. I was going to whisper to Jeeves to go open the gate over there, but now we don't have a chance. Well, I'm still, I'm still stealthy, right? So I could probably sneak over there? Um, you can try, sure. You're not in initiative order at the moment. Okay, I'm gonna open the uh, portcullis. Um, you slowly start to open it. Uh, it looks like you'll have to hold it for it to remain open. Ah. Uh, well, there's no rope or anything to tie. It I down. have rope. I have rope. You can have my rope. I have rope too. I just wanted to see anyway to tie it. Yeah, there's a pillar right behind you. Yes. Okay. I think we should hold that open for an escape, just in case. Indeed. There's Logan. I want to try to ask the wraiths a question. Go ahead. One must die, you say. How long have you been here? What do you mean, one must die? Um, I want you to roll an insight check. Or religion. Uh, either one. My insight's better. All right, uh, you can tell that uh, they are demanding a sacrifice, and uh, with that role, you can tell that it doesn't matter if it's a human or a creature, uh, it's just something that must die on the altar. That's what they are demanding. I kind of figured, seeing as how they didn't outright attack. But... Yeah, but as far as your questions go, they don't answer, they just keep chanting, one must die, over and over again. Do we have to go find a rat? Um, you can also tell that leaving the altar will provoke them. Okay, I'm not going right. anywhere then. I will see <laughs> right here. We picked up some strange relics, and some of them involved cadavers and like pieces of animals. Um, what do you have on your person, Alexandra? It'll have to be something that can bleed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm already wounded, so... So kill her. Yeah, sacrifice Alexandra. <laughs> yeah, apparently. <laughs> Just throw me on the altar. What is that pile down at the bottom of the room? There's got to be something living down there, right? Uh, it looks like a bunch of vegetation from where you're standing. Okay, grab a plant. We'll kill the plant. <laughs> Plants don't bleed. They die. Yeah, but with your uh, with your insight, you can tell that they they want blood. They want a living animal or a person or creature. Um, since I'm standing next to uh, to Jack, I, I whispered to him, "Do you think we could uh, possibly uh, cause an illusion of a sacrificial animal or person?" Are there any fish in the water? I can try. Um, the, the water is murky. What was that boy's name upstairs? Paul Shut Paul. up! <laughs> <laughs> you are not sacrificing the child! <laughs> Go out and find a cat or a rat or something. You're not sacrificing a cat. Oh, but you're down for the rat animal racist. <laughs> also relatively sure we wouldn't be sacrificing anything. Do you want me to go find something? I can go hunt for rats or something. 
you can fish around in the water. It's murky, but there's got to be some sort of fish or something, a toad. I think he'd have better luck going up to the village and finding something. Most things down here could be long dead. Nobody's had the guts to come in here for some time now. I got it. One of you, run quickly and find the house of rats. Oh. There you go. Actually. That's, that's a good idea. <clears throat> I'm sure we could just snatch one. Well, I can't leave and go anywhere right now. I'm afraid these things will turn on us if I try to leave this room, so I do have my, it's going to have to be one of you. I do have my small bag of human skin. I could probably catch it in that. Yeah. Hmm. If these are wrinkled fingers, bait. <laughs> you gonna give the rat the finger? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that doesn't sound like a bad idea, though, right? Go get a rat. Yay or nay? I'm all for it. I can't leave. It's preferable to Alexandra being the sacrifice. Um, yes, yeah. I agree. If it uh, works. Okay. I'm gonna, so, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna make a break. Mr. Jeeves uh, leaves the rope tied and the portcullis up, uh, starts ascending all the way up to the ground level. Um, you see that the children are there playing with their new little friend, and uh, Father Donovich asks if he can be of any help or anything. Uh, yeah, if you are any good at catching rats or small rodents, uh, I could use your help. Uh, yes, uh, where shall we go to, to get them? Shall uh, Do I need to leave? Uh, yeah, unless we can find, uh, unless we can find one inside this house. Uh, Paulton, would you be okay? I am needed. Do you think it's safe to stay with your new friends and play? And, uh, the little boy looks like he doesn't really want to be left alone, and, uh, he just kind of shyly shrugs. Um, if you want him to leave, uh, the child here, or take them with you, uh, just roll a per, uh, persuasion check just let 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 me know what you would like for father donovich and paulton to do uh well i could probably do it better by myself if i'm stealthy it'd be easier to snatch something true so, i'll leave him here i'll go by i'll go, I'll go by myself okay um I do ask if he's got any like cheese or anything good bait. Uh, I, I don't. I'm sorry. Uh, you you have I actually, uh, I think, a, a ration, right? I'm sure you kept something from. Yeah, I got the mess kit. Yeah, yeah, with the mess kit, uh, you can find some food in there that would work as good bait. Okay. All right. Did you want All to go right. back to that horrible house of rats? Um, what choice do you have? <laughs> yes, but I don't want to go inside. <laughs> okay. Uh, you arrive at the house of rats. Uh, it's on the very edge of town. Looks abandoned. Um, doors closed, thanks to you. <laughs> do I see any rats in the vicinity? Um, not outside but you could assume that there's probably plenty on the inside. Mm. Yeah. Do you want to open the door? No, but... <laughs> you <gonna> will! <laughs> I'm going to be trying to be stealthy first. Be brave, Jeeves. Uh, <laughs> yeah, my nerves are showing here. Yeah, you don't feel stealthy. Yeah, yeah, not stealthy. Not All stealthy. right, but uh, you do open the door. Um... The house is dark, very unlit, uh, just the light coming from the windows and Barovia daylight's not all that strong. Uh, there's a rotten mattress down not too far in front of you, maybe about uh, 15 feet, and um, it looks like your best chance uh, to find a rat is uh, to nab that mattress. 
All right, I'm gonna do it. Uh, dash in, grab the mattress, dash out. <laughs> okay, uh, roll a strength check. Oh, yes, because carrying mattresses is so easy. It's probably a small one. Yeah, it's pretty tiny. Yeah, you have no problem uh, nabbing the mattress, and as soon as you yank on it, uh, just these, uh, this torrent of a uh, <laughs> river of rats starts pouring around. Oh, um, you throw the mattress outside the door and uh, slam it behind you pretty quickly. Uh, there seems to be enough rats in the mattress to where you might be able to get one. Uh, go ahead and roll a, a d20 and add your strength. What's that strength check? Yeah. It's, it's really an unarmed attack. Excellent. All right. Uh, you reached out and snatch a rat up. Grab one with my teeth. Oh, <laughs> gross. Um, make a constitution save. No, I'm just kidding. No, I'm just joking. No, no. uh, you managed to just deftly grab one of these rats, and you've got it uh, pinned in a way to where it's trying to like bite your fingers and stuff, but you've got its head and its neck <laughs> held just right in one hand as you dash away from the rest of the rats. Yay. Okay, I'm going to rush back to the house. That couldn't have gone any better. Wow. No, that's, that's I know, right? good rolls there. Um, okay, uh, you deliver the rat back down here to your friends. I'll just put you back where you were. Uh, ascending the altar, you. Uh, what do you want to do? Uh, I'm going to hold rat the, the rat on the altar. I'm going to hold it still on the altar so that uh, Alexandra can dispatch it. All right, and how did you want to do so, Alexandra? I'm going to decapitate it with my hand axe. All right, hand axe out, funk, rat head off, um, and the apparition. I'm going to spill its blood all over the altar. Oh, okay, extra effect there, just <laughs> pouring them out uh, like a. Uh, I squeeze this body. Like one for yep. your homies. I want these apparitions to like us. And they do. Um, went, let's see. Let me read any details here that I, I don't want to overlook. Um, the apparitions fade away. Uh, their tire tireless chant uh, begins to echo again. And you feel like something just saw what you did. You don't know what it is, but it feels like some kind of omnipotent type presence has watched and judged you. Hmm. Uh, everyone give yourselves... Um, inspiration. I'll do it. I'll, I, I can do that pretty quickly myself. Yeah, I don't know how to do that. Oh, okay. It's like a little check mark on the uh, yeah. top of the box. Okay, uh, so you've all gained inspiration. Cool. Uh, oh, and you, okay. you feel like you could leave this chamber without um, provoking. Uh, before we do so, I'm going to check out this um, edge. As far as we can tell, it was just vegetation, but Elias is going Yeah, we're going to take a look close to look. Okay, both of you roll perception checks. Okay, yes. Uh, Elias, you can see that uh, this actually looks extremely impressive. There is this giant plant in the middle of it all, and... There is this big, huge, like, it looks like rose petals, but they're all closed. But it's so large, uh, these rose petals seem to be like, um, uh, like a rose before it blooms. Like a giant oh, bud. Uh, hmm. It, it smells quite beautiful, slowly. actually. <laughs> yeah, I would do. Hmm. Do you think that could be what is possessing this house? What owns this house? I don't know, but I'm pretty good at triggering bad things. That feels like a bad thing. Um, can we use some insight on the, the presence of the, the plant to see if we could um, learn anything else about it? Uh, you'd have to get closer. Okay. Well, I was already close, but... Oh, okay, so both of you are, like, actually investigating it to where you don't mind touching it? 
<laughs> yes, that's fine. I will All right. be very uh, brave. Let's get the other guys closer to us. <laughs> Why are you making them get closer? What if they don't want to? <laughs> well, uh, well, it's true. Okay, it's on us then. Okay, well, as soon as Alexandra touches it, uh, you seem to rouse it. It's an Alarun. Oh no. Emerging from the the bloom. Yep. You see a woman rise from the blossoming flower that opens up as you touch it. Um, it doesn't. It looks like a, a beautiful young woman, uh, naked, standing in the center of the flower, like some kind of Venus de Milo. Uh, what do you hear, um, young lady? I try to speak to it like a person. Did you just seriously say, what do you hear? Yeah, I did. Yeah. Uh, okay. I, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> I still have the rat's blood all over my hands, so I will offer my hands up to the rose. Oh, okay, you're offering it blood. Um, hmm. Not my own. Oh, this will not end well. <laughs> and Jack is actually saying this. Um, it looks hungrily at your hands. Mm. Uh, I whisper to um, Alexandra, she seems like she can't move very quickly. Perhaps we should leave her? That would seem like a good idea, but I, she does seem quite hungry. I, I really don't want to just leave with blood all over my hands. I would like to offer something to her. Maybe she won't attack us if we're kind. She'll you eat want, your hand! Do you want the body of the rat? Yeah, toss it over. Alright, no, uh, you seven. toss up a body, the, the uh, headless, bloody body of this rat, and uh, you are disgusted as she begins munching into it. <laughs> Alright. She looks at you eagerly, as if uh, she would like something more. I'm going to wipe off what's left of the blood of the rat off my hands onto the petals of the rose, and I'm going to bow to her and slowly back away. Hmm. Okay. Uh, it looks like she's allowing you to leave without uh, attacking you. Oh, thank God. But she does not seem uh, capable of speech, human language. Um, you're not even sure she can really understand you. Okay. Regardless, I will tell her we may be back with more for you. I would hate to leave you down here to starve. You are quite a beautiful creature. Thank Um, you for your mercy. It doesn't take much insight to see that she understood you, and she gives you a coy little smile. Mm. Mm, Coil. Uh, Elias is just kind of uncomfortable and embarrassed, so he kind of shuffles away. (laughs) (laughs) Alright. Yes, uh, she allows you to leave, if that's what you're doing. Yeah. Interesting. Okay, well, as strange and horrible as we thought this would be, this definitely was not the ultimate evil in the house. I proposed that the shadows themselves, that dagger, were, well, much more. Alright, well, give it a shot. Although I wonder, now that we're down here, with the wraiths that we saw here in this room, could we lure the shadows down here? and have the wraiths take out their relentless anger on them for not offering a sacrifice, as we did. Hmm. Maybe. After we're out of uh, ears reach, I think we should set them on fire. <laughs> Jack, why do you want to set everything on fire? 
because I don't trust things until they're on fire. <laughs> then I trust them. <laughs> Present company excluded. Uh, Says the man who was all for setting my butler on fire the other night when he was covered in centipede. I also electrocuted myself. Yes, you did. I am not amused. Setting, we are not setting the Alarum on fire. She was kind. She let us leave without causing us issue. She's a demon. And she allowed us to leave. Never thought she I would see a Belmont compassionate with demons, but if you are to set something on fire, let me uh, be out of the area. Fire bad. Fire bad. Uh, shall we go? Still, I wonder if we lure the shadows down here, would she help us? Hmm. You could ask her. That I could. But I don't know if she's capable of communicating back. That's the problem. I guarantee she's capable. It's simply does she feel like it or not. Uh, yeah, you could tell that she did understand what you were saying. It looked like she was capable of language. Better question. Do these shadows bleed? Uh, when you attacked them last time, they did not bleed. Uh, you couldn't even really tell if what kind of damage you were doing. It's just, um... It was very hard to tell with them. They look like solid masses of shadow. Well, I suppose it couldn't hurt to ask her, right? Uh, she says, You'll find no shadows here. She speaks? Apparently she does. No, there were shadows in the room above this one. They attacked us when we approached the painting that had the table and a dagger on it. When I touched the dagger, four shadows appeared and attacked us. Does this not sound familiar to you at all? You offer blood. You are an ally. <laughs> you will find no shadows here. Hmm. I think I understand. Well, thank you. I will ensure you are well fed. I do look forward to more. Gentlemen. Jack is standing there slack jawed. Um, Elias is quite surprised too. I think I understood from what she said that she agreed to help us with these shadows. This is very strange, but I suppose I'll allow it. Now the better question. Who will be brave enough to run up to that room, grab the dagger, and lure them back here? I'll do it. <laughs> you were so <laughs> eager to do it earlier, too. <laughs> Bravo, Jack. Okay, uh, Jack makes his way back to the room with the painting in it, back upstairs. Um, as soon as you grab the dagger, nothing happens. There are no shadows. <laughs> Seriously? Uh-huh. That's kind of what I thought. <clears throat> Bitch controls the house. Um, you can double the quantity of your dagger there, unless you already had two. Yeah, but yeah, you can add a yeah, dagger you to your inventory. Your... It's, it's uh, stained with blood. I want to scuff it up good and proper so I can know which one it is. Oh, the hilt is very different from your other ones. This looks like some kind of sacrificial dagger. Take it down to the others and say, there were no shadows. Look at the Alarum, as I'm sure you expected. Well, she did say we could find no shadows here. Or perhaps the, the shadow is satiated from what we just um, performed here on the altar. That could very well be too, as well. 
However, I do have one more pressing question that has been plaguing my mind. Ma'am, do you know what happened to the children's parents? Yes, I do. Were they killed by Strahd? We asked for immortality, and instead were given grief and destruction. Hmm. You are the force in control of this house, yes? We are all one here. Does that include the children? The children are part of us as well, yes. But they're their own spirits. Would you permit us to take them with us? They cannot leave. Hmm. This as is in not you are keeping them here, they are bound by rules. They knew nothing else. This is the world they know, and this is where they haunt. Even if we were to take their remains and bring them with us on our travels, they wouldn't be permitted to leave? If you have their remains, perhaps they could be put to rest. Blurred out, are you a demon? <laughs> Jack! Huh. Um, is that in, like, an... That's just a curious question, isn't it? That was something he was trying to hold back. His wisdom save failed. <laughs> <laughs> he got a one there, yeah. Yeah, that was a critical fail. Well done. Isn't there a demon in all of us? Fair enough. Elias says. Yes, but some of us have more and some of us have less. We, for instance, are from the Prime Material Plane. We were born here. We have souls that were theoretically formed here, not necessarily here, but on another similar one, and some of us stem from the pits of hell. I suspect you to be of the latter. Exactly. Or at least a world beyond our own. Do I look like something that would come from such a place? Yes. Yes, you do. Jack, you're being rude. No, I am being honest. And if I am being rude, then call me fool and you will be nothing but correct. You're a funny little one. <laughs> it's what my last employer thought as well. Fortunately for me, looks aren't everything. Well, Elias, I think our best bet right now would be to put the children's remains in their crypts where they belong. And we'll see what the children wish to do from here on out when we inform them of everything we've learned. Mm. That sounds fair. I uh, do not see any pressing reason to engage the... Uh the creature in front of us. Um, even though she is in control of this house, it no longer seems to have any uh, evil haunting presence that would, you know, require us to quell. So I, I think that's a fair plan. So the plan is to uh, go get the children or just put their bones in the crypts? currently their have their bones the now. Yeah, we're, we're going to put their bones in their crypts, and then we're going to just tell them everything we've learned. Yeah, I'm thinking maybe if we uh, lay their bones and remains to rest like that, they may be a little bit more open to um, Did my Discord just die? There was a here in the darker presence of the house has seemed to have lifted a little bit. Maybe the children will find a little bit more comfort here. Alright, so you guys are heading on to the crypts then. Yep. Oh, looks Again, like Thank right you, there. thank you, my lady, for all of your assistance and thank you for permitting us to leave and being so merciful. I will ensure that you get fed regularly. How often do you need fed and how much blood? The bigger the sacrifice, the better. And as often as you can, please. 
What will become of the house above? For you, no harm will be done. Can you extend that to anyone who is not actively trying to harm you or the home? Any friend of yours is a friend of mine. Hmm. Were you the one who used the image of the children to lure us inside in the first place? We are all one here. Take that as a yes. Well, I still have a bit of my own blood from being wounded earlier, so I'm going to wipe a little bit of that on the petals as well, give her a little bit of an extra boost. Uh, she uh, graciously licks it up. Would such a creature have strong magic to project an illusion all the way outside the house? I ask. Um, you're asking who? Jack. Is it possible? <clears throat> Between the both of you, uh, uh, roll... A, whoever's got the better insight, roll it with advantage. Uh, I've got six. So. Yeah, you've got better insight. Oh, wow. Okay, so uh, with a 23 there, you can easily um, just kind of put it all together after uh, you're thinking of the experience of the house as a whole. Um, you feel that the house is a presence of its own. That I was thinking it, that, yeah. Yeah, the, the house is haunted. It is um, its own entity, and within it, uh, apparently... All of this was uh, the result, or it started out. You don't, you're not exactly sure what it is now exactly, but you know it all started out from the um, the goings on of this cult that you've apparently been uh, seeing. Uh, apparently, Elizabeth and Gustav had this house, and for whatever reason, down here they ran some kind of cult. And uh, yeah. um, after they asked for and were denied immortality, apparently from Strahd if you were to guess from the painting. Um, he didn't grant their wish and instead either cursed them or just slew them. But uh, regardless, they they were apparently trapped here uh, to be damned and, and cursed. Um, the uh, Allura Une that you found, you're not quite sure. It, it seems to be its own entity like the children, but um, all part of the same result or curse found in the house. Okay, so we can surmise from all this information, and uh, I guess Elias is kind of verbally repeating some of what you just said, but we can kind of assume that there's no singular thing we could do to stop the house being haunted. It's kind of just its own like state of being. Like, it's just it is how it is, basically. Um, well, you're not sure about, like, maybe you're removing a curse or anything, but uh, the one thing that ran, rung out to you as the most true is when the children told you that the house is the one that lures people here. The house is right. the one that tricked you into coming in. Even though you guys came here willingly, uh, she didn't know that when, when Rose said that. Gather my party around me. Like, just wave everybody over, like, come here, I have an idea. Oh. That's not be good. Um, Ismark, he runs this town, yes? Yes. There are going to be criminals, even in a place such as this. Yes? Yes, yeah, Probably want to be put to death. <laughs> <laughs> like the pie lady. I see where you're doing with this. Exactly. Feeding the Ulrian. Well, that does look like a prison beside this room, so... <laughs> Perhaps we can turn this into a uh, death row, as it were. <laughs> We're gonna go into business. Oh boy. My goodness. The children ha can have playmates. and I'm thinking we try and turn this house, which has been seen as a negative, into a positive. A literal death house is what you're suggesting. Uh, among other things, yes. Of course, we would try and use it for uh, base camp as we could. But beyond that, yes, we uh, turn it into death row and we see if we can... We turn it into a positive force in the community. 
If I were of another mindset, I'd suggest we monetize it, but given that won't help us, since we don't intend to stick around here forever, we set it up so that the Alarune is fed and the house looks upon the village favorably. Perhaps next time it will be able to help someone in town during one of those sieges. How helpful would it be, for instance, if people could duck in, fill the basement, and then set the house itself on fire? It will come back. The people will be safe. And the zombies will be dead. Sure it's an house, But I'm sure the house still doesn't appreciate being set fire to, even if it does come back. <laughs> All room, how would the house feel about that? It takes the, the house some time to regenerate. Hmm. But if it, who are being fed, entertained, and played with, would it be amenable to that from time to time? As long as there's a steady supply of blood. <laughs> uh, do you have preference on human, cow, or other? I've encountered these types of creatures before in my homeland. They typically tend to prefer human. She just grins wickedly. Uh -huh. Your voice went out there, Mike. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. My Discord's having issues. I think it's because I'm trying to oh. host two bots, uh, uh -oh. two Fantasy Grounds. Can you guys hear me? Can't hear you anymore at all. Yeah, my microphone died. I think Fantasy Grounds froze as well. I, uh, God. No, mine's still on. And happened again. <laughs> That's lag, maybe. Yeah, last thing we heard was I'm um, sorry, my Discord. Oh, can you hear me yet? I didn't hear that much. I'm sorry, my. Can you guys hear me yet? Yeah, that's probably my record. <laughs> Can you hear me now? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Can you connect to uh, Fantasy Grounds? I never lost connection. Okay. Sitting here. I told so you my but, internet's uh, been shitty today. But Mark vanished. And let me put my cat in the room so my cat will be quiet. Hold on, one minute. Yeah. Meow. The soundboard and the uh, the orchestra bot died though. I think Mike did it on purpose. Okay, I'm back. Good day. Welcome back. So, yeah, we didn't hear anything after your reply to what I said. Um, when asked if it prefers humans, it just wickedly grinned. <laughs> well, we have something to talk to Ismark about. Uh... And I have one more question for the other room before we uh, take leave of her. My beautiful friend, do you have any spores or any seedlings you wish us to transplant into the world that would be free of this place, unlike you? <laughs> wow. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, that's interesting. Uh, sure, she will present. Uh, and there was your microphone again. Oh my god! Should I just type? Jesus. Uh, Damn, just things are getting interesting. <laughs> Trying to get it. We can't hear any of it. Like you got you out completely. God damn after it! You said sure. She will. Am I back yet? I don't know when I'm. I'll just restart Discord again. That seemed to work last time.
All right. Um, am I back now? Yep, there you go. Okay, well, my internet's uh, crapping out pretty hard, but the oh, no. uh, the alert Un gives you, uh, she says, I never thought I would ever get to use this, and it, she hands you a large seed. Hmm. Yay. I will wrap that up in my cloak and store it safely. Don't plant it in a place with sunlight, please. Actually, I had quite an interesting idea of myself. There's a very, very dense forest surrounding this town with a very, very thick fog. I'm sure plenty of wanderers get lost. Oh, I've never seen outside here. That might be okay. So you're proposing to feed uh, another Arune lost wanderers? It's not a living creature. Does it not deserve life and eat? <laughs> humans? No, it doesn't deserve to eat humans. What makes us so different from the cows upon which we feast? Cows oh, gentlemen, let's not be drawn into a philosophical debate, please. <laughs> and why not? Such can be fun. Because we've other things to do. Huh. Let us go lay the bones of the children to rest in their crypts and inform them of everything we've learned. Oh, goody. Hopefully my, uh, my microphone will cooperate for that. Well, you sound good and strong now. Excellent. Uh, okay, I'll just move everybody to the crypts then. Um, and I just crashed. Uh-oh. Well, that's fine. Um, we can use our imagination. I'm trying to reconnect now. I'm still here, it looks like. I think I've lost Mr. Jeeves's token. Where did it go? Uh, I was in green like the others. Huh. You have to re-drag me over. Oh, I don't even know where you're at in here. Um, I mean, from the uh, combat tracker. Or oh, okay. Character sheet. Yeah. Uh, let me do that then. All right. Okay. Can you reshare the map? Because yeah, I crashed. I had to reconnect. It's up. Uh, My cat wants to sing course. everyone a song. I don't know if you can hear that. I'm pretty sure you can though. All right, so um, you have the remains of uh, Rose and Thorn in sheets. Can you reach out the map? I still don't have it. I did. Is it not showing up? We don't really need the map for this. We just need Discord to cooperate for a there little bit. Okay. Okay. So, um, are are you going to put the uh, the remains in the coffins? Yes. Yep. All right, um, you see the uh, presence of Rose appear before you, and um, she says, Thorn, come here. And then you hear a little, okay, as the little boy drifts to his sister's side. I don't hear the screaming anymore, Rosvalda. 
Me either. You go rest now. I don't think we have to feel hungry anymore if we try and sleep. She kisses her little brother. And after her brother is at peace, uh, Rose begins to weep. You remember the first time you saw her when she was comforting her crying brother. Uh, you get the sense that this might be the first time that she's cried herself in a long time. Thank you. I've always wanted friends. Maybe when you Lean die, you, we can play together. And then, uh, and then uh, Rose hugs Alexandra and stops crying. And then she fades away, waving her tiny hand. Hmm. That was adorable. And it's sad. But you uh, feel as if their souls have been put to rest. You don't know where they went, but you can tell that they're at least no longer bound to this house. All right, and uh, Elias has a prayer of thanks of uh, the Lord providing a, a way of rest for the children. And you all just leveled up. Woo! Ooh. Yay! And that's a great place should, for us to conclude tonight's session. We should probably check on that painting one more time just to see what's going on with it. Okay, uh, going over to the painting, you see that um, it looks like the second version that you found last with the cultists that are being slaughtered. So no changes to it? No. That was okay. their reward. <laughs> yeah, it looks like they did to get some sort of uh, immortality if you consider being ghosts and ghouls and all this stuff down here. Shadows. Well, what are we going to do? Because Jack, we still have the deed to the house. Yeah. Well, I suppose you could consider it somewhat ours now, huh? I suppose so. You call it home. You now own property in Barovia. <laughs> Proud owners of living in the worst damn place in existence. Well, yes. hooray, we leveled up. Um, Jack, you noticed that um, when you took the long rest, uh, it gave you time to look over the books that you had taken from the library. And I was just wondering about those, yeah. Yeah, the history books, um, it looks like Barovia was actually part of ancient Transylvania. So Father Donovich is not apparently up on his uh, current events or good history. Hmm. Can I give my book on demon summoning that I was holding for Jack back to him now? Sure. I really don't want it sitting in my inventory anymore. How do I give it to him? Uh, I think you just drag it from your inventory to his profile picture. Okay. No? No? Well, that didn't work, I don't think. In your inventory, what's it called? Book on Demon Summoning. Um, bump. Yay. I drug it to his inventory from your inventory. Okay. Okay. Um, do you guys want to say anything before we wrap up tonight? That was awesome. <laughs> what? So what are you guys going to do now that you basically have a base? Have a cup of tea. Exactly what I said I was. Speak to Ismark. <laughs> okay. And I'll, I'll permit Father Donovich to leave to go back to his uh, church, most likely. Yeah, he's probably pretty confused now that uh, the ghost children disappeared from his presence. <laughs> yeah, we should probably go explain to him what's going on. And uh, then I suppose we'll go to the uh, the fortune teller, finally. Yes. Okay, so... We should guess... probably take another rest, though, so I can heal up what's left of my wounds. Well, you do have a house here, so pick a bedroom. 
I pick the one nearest uh, the library. That's my library now. All right. Uh, yeah, show me the whole map. I want to see the, the drums again. Sure. Um, just the lower floor. I'll show you all of those. And I will uh, share this on Facebook as well. Hmm. All right. I think I'll take. <laughs> Jesus laying down. Um, yeah. On the second floor at the top is where the library is at. I'll take the attic room, the room that's by where the children's bedroom was. Okay, that level of, uh, the first and the second floor look pretty nice. The third and attic, they look, um, all run down and, and gross. <laughs> it's a fixer rubber, but it'll be fine. <laughs> um, and the toys, I would take the third floor, but that had the demon baby in it, so... Yeah. Apparently it doesn't, uh, bother Jeeves, because he's sleeping in the master suite. There you go. All right, so I will apply a long rest. Uh, Fine, I'll take the demon baby third floor room with it. Yeah, I guess if you wanted to, you could split it out among <laughs> uh, floors. There's a floor for everyone. Yeah. Hmm. I will go ahead and apply a long rest. And... Um, I'll let you guys pick what time it is tomorrow when you wake up, or when you're... You don't have to sleep the whole time, but um, before you want to start your actions for the next uh, session, what time would you like it to be? Mm. Bright and early in the morning, that way we can drag those gypsy bums out of their hole and make them escort us to that uh, lead gypsy person. <laughs> so, uh, what time? Sorry. What about the uh, go what about the ghostly procession? Did we ever solve that? Nope. No. We just know of it, that's all. When we get back, it'll be 8 in the morning. You guys will uh, have a steady supply of bland food um, that you may eat as well that is served up by the house. Um, quick question. Sure. You applied a long rest, right? Um, yes. That have given me both my hit dice back? Uh, it only gives you half of your hit dice back when you take a long rest. Oh, okay. All right, so uh, next adventure will be what Mark says. I added a rogue level and added the gain to build. Oh, yeah, you yeah. guys are leveling up now. If I guess you can do that now if you'd like. Yay! Yeah, um, make like, sure I to use the player handbook. I get more HP. Hooray! Yep, and you get extra because of your feet. Got toughness. Where is the handbook around here? Crap, where is it? Library. Um, before you level up, note your hit points, because if you're if you're a yeah, lower of hit points, I wanna and I wanna know what it was beforehand. It's at thirty six right now. And will you be rolling, or will you be taking the average? Uh, I don't know. I'm tempted to just to take the average this time, but I kind of want to roll because I've been lucky the past couple times. <laughs> yeah, luck can't last forever. I know, I know. I think I was at, what, 29 before? What, ah, crap, what do I have to roll again in D10? 
Yep. Oh, nice. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, <laughs> so it's 9 plus your constitution modifier, which is 11. And then uh, you get your toughness feats. Let me read that. I think that's plus 2. Uh, where is your feats? It's under abilities, I think, somewhere, right? I will just look in the player's handbook and look at feats. And, uh, tough. It says. Your hit points maximum increase by an amount equal to twice your level when you gain this feat. Whenever you gain a level there after, your hit point maximum increases by an additional two points. So 11, 12, 13 total. So you had what, 32? I had 36. 36 plus uh, 13. So 49. Oot. Getting on up there. You're a tank now. <laughs> that just means Ooh, yeah. uh, I won't feel so guilty about hitting you so much. <laughs> hey! <laughs> um, is anyone else leveling up? Jeeves yeah, I am. Or... It, it gave you the average, Jeeves. Yeah, it seems to have. Which was... Well... I think it's your hit dice. Five, five plus two. Actually, it was probably six plus two. It seems to give you that extra one. All right, so uh, Elias so I rolled myself up to level four and six. It didn't touch. There we go. So yours goes up um, seven, yep. Elias. Yep. Yep. It was going to be seven anyway with the average. <laughs> oh wait a minute! I, we reached level four, so don't we get? Um, something for that, I thought. Yeah, uh, I think it maxes out your first tier of levels, so that will be described in your individual yeah, uh, yeah. For you, let's see, under fighter here. Uh, fourth level, you get your proficiency bonus doesn't go up. Uh, you get an ability get score improvement, or you could take a feat. Anytime that you are offered an ability score improvement, um, you can substitute that for gaining a feat instead. one ability score of your choice by two or you can increase two ability scores of your choice by one. I don't know. It's kind of tempting to get my strength back up. Let me look at the feats and I'll make up my mind after. And I'm back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Hey. What was that after hit points? Um, when you, well, I didn't check for a sorcerer. Let me check real quick. I totally forgot to leave a list of all the feats that I left behind originally. I'm like, I'm gonna do this. Uh, there's plenty. I mean, we have the PHB available to us. If no, no, I'm looking at it now. But remember that list I made originally? That I narrowed it down to like four of them. Oh, I should have yeah. just kept that list. Uh, looks like sorcerers, um, let's see, at fourth level, yeah, abilities score improvement, uh, you'll have five cantrips and four sorcery points. Your proficiency stays at two. I'm at a third level sorcery, though. First level. Oh, oh I'm sorry. 
then that's three sorcery points, uh, four cantrips. So cantrips didn't change. But you did get another sorcery point. And spell slots per level. At third level, you will have two second level spells and uh, four first level spells. And you have a total of four spells known. So you got slots for four firsts and uh, two seconds. So you get a new tier of magic available to you. Oh, you also get a uh, meta magic. Yep, I already got them picked out and added. Um, in your character sheet, uh, with your spells, I guess under actions, uh, you can go into preparation mode down there, where it says standard. You just toggle that to preparation. And then you can change the amount of like um, stuff you get daily and what spells you have prepared and all that good stuff. And every spell, not just in the player's handbook, uh, everything should, even Green Flame Blade, everything should be part of the uh, deluxe player's handbook that you guys got. So. Um, it's just a shitload of spells available to you. And when you reach uh, fourth level, you get an ability score improvement too, right? Um, well, is that in the level of a class or just your character level? That's in level of the class anymore. Fourth level, any class gets you uh, ability up. Yeah, so those who have multi-classed don't get that. They just, they just I think that's everybody but Jeeves. Uh, I don't think that Alexandra's multi-class anymore, is she? No, she's just no, a fighter. Ice. So yeah, you and me uh, have to wait another level. Right, but we should be um, sure those two get their ability improvement. Well, they get to choose between either that or a feat. Yeah, there's some good feats in here. I know, right? Um, I had it narrowed down to like four of them, and now I've got a big list again. Well, <laughs> if you're going to increase your scores, you can either... Uh, it says, some of these features allow you to increase your ability scores, either increasing two scores by one each, or increasing one score by two. Yeah. You can't increase an ability score above 20. In addition, every character's proficiency bonus increases at certain levels. And it keeps talking. Yeah, that reference manual I linked in the chat, that's uh, basically the entire player's handbook as if you had the physical copy right there in front of you. It reads the same. All the chapters are the same. It's even got the same art. And it goes into... Um, uh, chapter 1, creating a character uh, beyond first level is a pretty good read for leveling up but it's also got all of your class stuff and all that good stuff in there too yeah I think I'm going to stick with the uh, ability score upgrade on my uh, dexterity it gives me a nice plus one to AC plus one to any so how much did you increase and which ones was it I gave uh, both points to dexterity ah ok damn so now plus 4 now now. It, yeah now it's at 18 plus 6 
Uh, yeah, plus four. Yeah, that'll serve you well. I uh, think so. Jack's going to have to choose some... make some hard choices about what spells to use. I think... Uh, Thunder Wave's pretty good. Um, shield's pretty good. All of them have a purpose. Burning Hands is uh, one that grows with you. Three D six fire damage on a failed save with burning hands. It's pretty I've good. narrowed it down to seven possible feats. Huh, <laughs> that's it? Only seven? Yeah. I've got dual wielder, which is fun. You master fighting with two weapons, gaining the following benefits. You gain a plus one bonus to AC while you are wielding a separate melee weapon in each hand. You can use two-weapon fighting even when the one-handed melee weapons you're wielding aren't light. And you can draw or stow two one-handed weapons when you would normally only be able to draw or stow. That way I can use my whip in one hand and my rapier in the other. <laughs> um, it says... Uh, both of them don't have to be light? Like you could use two great axes? You can use two weapon fighting even when the one handed melee weapons you are wielding aren't light. Oh, well, I guess so then. Damn. <laughs> I could do defensive duelist, which prerequisite is dexterity 13 or higher, which I already have. When you are wielding a finesse weapon with which you are proficient and another creature hits you with a melee attack, you can use your reaction to add your proficiency bonus to your AC for that attack, potentially causing the attack to miss you. Yeah, and you use nothing but finesse weapons. Yeah, so that one might come in handy. I might want that one. There's also Dungeon Delver. Alerts you to hidden traps and secret doors found in many dungeons. You get the following benefits. You have an advantage on wisdom, perception, and intelligence investigation checks made to detect the presence of secret doors. You have advantage of saving throws made to avoid or resist traps. You have resistance to the damage dealt by traps, and you can search for traps while traveling at a normal pace instead of only at a slow pace. Which I, now that I come to think about, I don't really need, because usually Jack and Jeeves check for traps and all that anyway. True. And I think my, um, my perception check is high enough as it is right now where I don't need to modify that. It's also durable. Hardy and resilient, you gain the following benefits. Increase your constitution score by 1 to a maximum of 20. When you roll a hit die to regain hit points, the maximum number of hit points you regain from the roll equals twice your constitution modifier, minimum. Jeez. That, yeah, one, don't mind me. <laughs> that one could come in handy when what I do all that called? Durable. Damn. Yeah, that would make you a hell of a tank. You're already a hit point monster. Could also do healer. You are an able physician, allowing you to mend wounds quickly and get your allies back in the fight. You gain the following benefits. When a creature, sorry, when you use a healer's kit to stabilize a dying creature, that creature also regains one hit point. As an action, you can spend one use of a healer's kit to tend to a creature and restore 1d6 plus 4 hit points to it, plus additional hit points equal to the creature's maximum number of hit dice. The well, creature can't regain hit points from its feet again until after it finishes a short or a long rest. Well, the shredded sheets that uh, Mr. Jeeves got from the Vistani inn owners would then come in handy. Exactly. I knew it. <laughs> And then there's also Inspiring Leader, which prerequisite is Charisma 13 or higher, which I already have. You can spend 10 minutes inspiring your companions, shoring up their resolve to fight. When you do so, choose up to six friendly creatures, which can include yourself, within a 30 feet of you who can see or hear you and who can understand you. Each creature can gain temporary hit points equal to your level plus your Charisma modifier. 
a creature can't gain temporary hit points from this feat again until after a short or a long rest. Mm -hmm. So that would be, let's see, um, fight level four plus my charisma modifier two. So it would be an instant six hit points to anybody in the area. And then there's lastly skilled, which I was thinking of in the first place originally. You gain proficiency in any combination of three skills or tools of your choice. Hmm. Stuff. Oh, sorry, I'm tired, guys. I need to go to sleep. Right. I stayed up till midnight trying to get that uh, podcast, podcast episode out there. Yeah. I think I'll skip skilled, so that narrows it down to five. I think I'm done. Uh, what uh, magic did you choose? Mirror image. Ever play Devil May Cry? I'm Virgil now. Oh, no. Three <laughs> illusionary duplicates of yourself appear in your space. Until the <laughs> spell ends, the duplicates move with you and mimic your actions, shifting positions so it's impossible to track which image is real. You can uh, you can use your action to dismiss them. Um, each time a creature targets you, roll a d20 to determine whether the attack instead targets one of your duplicates. Uh, if you have three duplicates, you must roll a d6 or higher to change... Above a 6 or higher. Oh, roll a 6 or higher to change the attack's target to a duplicate. With two duplicates, you must roll an eight or higher. With one, you must roll an eleven or higher. Um, a du duplicate's AC equals ten plus your dex mod. If an attack hits a duplicate, the duplicate is destroyed. A duplicate can be destroyed only by an attack that hits it. Uh, ignores all other damage effects. The spell ends when all are destroyed. The duration is one minute though. Um, a, creature's, a creature is unaffected by the spell if it can't see, if it relies on senses other than sight such as blind sight, or if it can perceive illusion as, a, as false as with true sight. So, okay, so let's say that you have three. Uh, you roll a d20 when I try to hit you and as long as you roll higher than six, you can um, redirect, redirect that. Hit. Yep. I like it. Plus, we get Plus like get three times more jack. And that's always a good thing. I also figured out that I was shorting myself on hit points because uh, Dragon Blood gives you plus one per sorcerer level. Oh. <laughs> Did you correct it? Yep, I got the whole 21. You're just rolling in them now. Yep. <laughs> There's a reason I picked Mirror Image. Yeah, yeah, that should help out. And you can cast you that can... twice, right? At your level? At your level. Yes. I also have uh, three sorcery points, and I picked Quicken. So, what does Quicken allow you to do? Just instantly cast it if you've got it prepared or something? What is it? Uh, in this edition, Quicken is spend a sorcery point and cast it as a bonus action. Oh, okay. Can you cast it as a reaction? In other words, a reaction to an attack. Like, could you cast a uh, mirror image because I attacked you, or do you have to wait until it's your turn to use your bonus action? I have to wait for my turn to use my bonus action, but I can still uh, toss up shield as a reaction, which is an instant plus five to my AC. I just haven't been. Why not? Jack has his reasons. <laughs> uh... What does shield come from? Is that a spell that is a cantrip or something? It is a spell. It is a first level sorcerer spell. Oh, okay. I guess you didn't know that 
uh, spell earlier? I did, but I forget it in the moment, and I don't worry about it after the fact, because if I forget it, I figure he forgets it. <laughs> well, we need to uh, we need to get Fantasy Grounds uh, effects down to a science and learn how to make all that stuff work. Because it's really powerful, and um, I'd like to see how we could uh, get some of those spells. Like I narrowed that... it down to three. Well, if you'd like my opinion, run those three by me. Uh, the, the defensive duelist, durable, or healer. I say leave the healing up to... Well, it's good to have someone else in the party in case Elias goes down. Like, if if yeah. Elias goes down first, you guys are without any way of, of healing. The best thing you can do is, like, stabilize him. Well, some good news, um, if I am still around, I have Paladin spells now because I got a level 2 Paladin um, and level 2 Cleric, so I'm going to have actually two different versions of Cure Wounds, so I'm going to have almost double the uh, healing I had before. Nice. It did but mess up my. It seemed to mess up my spell slots when I leveled up, though. But I guess that'll be all right. Well, well you can go into preparation duelist. mode and change them. Okay. The defensive duelist was when you're wielding a finesse weapon, which was with which you're proficient, and another creature hits you with a melee attack. You can use your reaction to add your proficiency bonus to your AC for that attack, potentially causing the attack to miss you. Well, that sounds perfect for a tank, but so does durability. I know, the durable works awesome too. Hardy and resilient, you gain the following benefits. You increase your constitution score by 1 to a maximum of 20, and when you roll a hit die to regain hit points, the minimum number of hit points you can regain from the roll equals twice your constitution modifier. But you're not a con monkey, you're a dex monkey. And exactly. I think that the defensive fighter makes more sense. But then, okay, so if I get durable, that also leaves healer or defensive duelist. Yeah, I would go with the defensive duelist. Yeah, I suppose I can get healer next time I get feats. Okay, defensive duelist. How do you reset <laughs> the effects? Um, on the combat tracker, you've got like that little thing at the very far right. It looks like some kind of bird. I don't know. And you click that, and then uh, there's a whole bunch of like <laughs> red oh. minus buttons you can hit to just just take those off. Jeeves has like every effect ever. Yeah, yeah. It seems to be accumulating. I don't yeah. see a bird. Yeah, I don't see a bird anywhere. Um, well, you know what the link shield looks like? Yeah. Oh, it looks different in the client view. Uh, do you just want me to take them all off? Yeah. Yeah, I think I figured out the, the cloak of protection save. That's it. Well, he keeps that AC1, though, thing, doesn't he? Yeah, the clock protection gives me AC1 and save me 12 1. Ooh, one more level and I get that for an attack. Yeah. And, uh, I'm ready for level 5. That's gonna be fun. I get a uh, extra um, sneak attack dice next level. Oh man, those sneak attacks are killer. Yeah, they are. At fifth level, you can attack twice instead of once whenever you take the attack <laughs> action on your turn. That's going to be fun. Nice. Okie doke. I am, uh, stopping yeah, the recording. You need